Hello, today I want to show you how to play Windows games on your old Troid XU4. For this we already have installed Exagear, which is an environment for x86 applications. And on top of Exagear we have installed Play on Linux, which uses Wine to play your Windows games and Play on Linux. If you start, after the program started, we are greeted with this front end from Play on Linux. And since we want to install a new game, we just click on the install button. And we select that we want to install an application that is not listed on the programs. There's actually an, a list of different games which you can install and there are a lot of pre-configured games here that makes it easy to install whatever you want to install. Here we select that we want to install in a new virtual drive. Since we want to install Civilization 3, I'm going to give it the name Civilization 3 as well. Um, here we can configure if we want to change our default settings, which is actually what we want to do. We want to change the wine configuration to set up our virtual display, as well as we want to install some libraries. And after a short while, our new virtual drive is being created and the basic settings like API version for Windows XP and similar things are pre-configured in the background. So the setup wizard opened our Wine configuration just as we asked it to do. What we do here is we go to the graphics tab and select that we want to use a virtual desktop. Since the game is running in 1024 by 768 that's what we're gonna use as a resolution for our desktop and this is where we can install different drivers that might be needed for different application like DirectX, Direct Play, Direct Music. What we want to do here is we install DSound which is the only thing that's needed for our game. So after that's done it asks us where our setup files located. And I have the GOG file from Civilization 3, which is pretty much a very easy installer for Windows machines. And it's gonna open our virtual desktop. which we now can see the GOG installer. We just accept the license terms, click on install, and then we have to wait. Since this is taking a very long time, I'm gonna pause here. This is taking about 10 to 15 minutes and I'll be back then. Okay, we are in about 10 minutes inside the installation process. Exit the installer, something is not working here. So you just click OK. As you can see, it says it installed correctly anyway. So we are done here and we just exit the application. So the installation of Civilization 3 is actually quite big. It's about 1.7 gigabytes so this takes a long time normally it doesn't take that long um, now that it's finished scanning the folder the virtual drive you have a different kind of programs that we could choose to create a desktop icon from normally you would expect that it would be the launcher that we actually need here but um, in this version we actually need the civilization 3 conquests file. If you select that one, click next and it's gonna ask us what the desktop shortcut should be named and I just prefer to call it Civilization 3 and with that we have a new desktop icon. It's gonna start scanning the drive again if there's new icons that you want to create since this is taking a long time again and we don't need any other icon. I'm just gonna cancel this and now we have Civilization 3 listed in our Play on Linux front end 
as well as an icon on the desktop. If we try to stop the icon from the desktop, we will get an error. But to fix that, it's rather easy. We go in the settings of the icon and the command, we just need to put exagir in front of it. Exagir space dash dash space. With that, we tell the program needs to be run in the exagir environment. And that's all we need to actually start the game. We just double click the game and wait for it to start. Once again, loading is a little bit slow, so it takes a while until you actually see that it started the game and it's opening up the virtual desktop. So this might happen, it might crash. I don't know why it's doing this, but every now and then the program crashes for me. But when it does that, you just close the program and restart it. And for some magical reasons, normally that's how it works. Here we go, this time it worked. Let's just enjoy some game footage. Sadly the game is suffering from some sound issues, but it's not really a big deal. The sound issue is actually a known issue for this game and it's not necessarily related to the old droid. There's some guides that just say you turn off the sound and turn it back on and it should fix some of the issues. I guess we can live without the music for the moment. So and here it is. The game is actually running on full speed. I've played a couple hours of this game already and I can't say there's any issues with it.
Yeah, there isn't much to see in the first couple minutes of the games, even in the first hour, but let me tell you, this is working fine. Let me just try something. So I copied over a save game of my previous game, so that you can see what it looks like if you're further into the game. Disable the music for the moment. So as you can see the motions are all fluent and the game actually works fine.